So, a quick story from the narrator. One of the first video games I ever had was MLB 06 The Show for PS2. Back when I was like, really young, I would set an alarm for 6am every day and play MLB The Show for 2 hours, then get ready for school and all that. Every day. Manny Ramirez was a monster in that game, and he was so fun to play as. While this video was being made, I looked on YouTube to see if there were any clips of Manny hitting an absolute nuke. You wanna know how long it took to find one? About a minute. Now a swing, and Manny hits this one high in the air and deep, and when it comes down, it's gonna be a home run! He did this sort of thing a lot with the Red Sox. Manny hits this! When Manny joined the Red Sox, he immediately got to work from day one. He hit over 400 in April and was hitting 335 at the All-Star break. For the fourth year in a row, he finished with at least 38 home runs, 120 RBI, a 300 batting average, and a 400 OBP. And this year, he led the AL in intentional walks. Manny was just... Did that ball just go to the fifth deck? Funny enough, that wasn't even the longest homer he hit that year. This was... Manny hits one high and deep to left, another mammoth home run off the light tower. Manny missed some time with injury in 2002, but he even found a way to make that time memorable. You see, he had to play in a minor league rehab game to get ready for a return to the Red Sox. He was a little late to the game, for starters, made sure to let everyone know he wanted sushi, and somehow lost an earring sliding into third base. Pretty interesting day for Manny. When he was healthy enough to play for Boston, he was one of the best hitters in baseball again. He posted a new career high in batting average and OBP, leading his league in both stats. But neither of his first two years in Boston included a playoff game. In 2003, that would change. 2003 was a very interesting year for Manny. Then again, most years are, but here's what happened. Manny missed a couple games against the Yankees because he had pharyngitis. During said games, Manny was seen hanging out with a Yankees player and former teammate, Enrique Wilson. This guy. This is Enrique Wilson. It looks like he's swimming into home plate. Manny and Enrique were good friends, and both of them said no heavy drinking or partying took place. The Sox still benched Manny for a game. Manny did make a new friend in 2003. A new partner in the lineup had a breakout year, and his name was David Ortiz. Ortiz ended up making a big difference in the lineup, as both of them would mash together for years to come. Manny did his thing again, but also having a powerful co-star in the lineup made a difference. Ortiz's breakout year helped push the Sox past the Mariners in a close race for the AL wildcard, which got them an ALDS matchup with the Oakland A's. This might sound familiar, but the Red Sox lost the first two of the series and were one loss away from going home. That's where the late game heroics came in. For a big try. Nixon high in the air, deep to center, Burns is back at the warning track at the wall. It's gone! And the Red Sox have stayed alive! There goes. Ramirez, that ball is hit well! Deep to right, die! Can't get to it! Off the wall! One run is in! Here comes Ramirez! And the throw goes right to the middle of the infield, and Boston has gone ahead! Game 5 in Oakland. Winner gets to play the Yankees for a chance to go to the World Series. It's tied at 1 in the 6th inning. Manny? Do Manny stuff, please. And Manny lifts one into deep left center field. Guillen back at the wall. Goodbye. And Ramirez walking to first base and pointing to his teammate. The Red Sox would win this game 4-3. to three. To Yankee Stadium we go. Game 1. Sox win. Manny goes yard. Game 2. Yankees win. Series is even going back to Boston. Game 3. Tensions are high by the fourth inning. Roger Clemens throws at Manny Ramirez, and he doesn't like it. This incident is better known for Don Zimmer, a 72-year-old Yankee coach, charging at our old buddy Pedro, and Pedro controversially throwing him to the ground. Yankees win a very tense game, 4-3. Game 4. Sox rebound. Series is even at two games each. Game 5. Manny hits another home run, but the Yankees win. Game 6. Yankees are up 6-4, nine outs away from going back to the World Series. Sox rally, win the game, and force a Game 7. Two things to note before we talk about Game 7. One, 
The Yankees have a long and proud history of beating up on the Red Sox. Two, the Red Sox haven't won the World Series since 1918. With those two things being known, let's talk about Game 7 of the 2003 ALCS. The Red Sox jump out to an early 4-0 lead. Enrique Wilson's back. Enrique Wilson, his throw sails into the seats, and that'll bring Veritek to the plate. And with the Red Sox having Pedro on the mound, all looks good. Okay, so Pedro's getting tired, and you have to win this game. Make a choice. Red Sox manager Grady Little chose A. Let's see how it worked. A flare in the center field. Out is Walker, won't get it. The base running of Matt Zoe. He comes home. Nobody covers second. Tie game. Well then, this game would head into extra innings. Mariano Rivera throws three scoreless innings to take us into the bottom of the 11th. Tied at five, Aaron Boone is going to lead off the inning, over 15 years before he would call the Yankees savages. A game I happen to be at, by the way. Yankee manager Joe Torre said he told Boone to just hit a single, get a rally started, that sort of thing. This is what he did. As Boone hits it to deep left, that might send the Yankees to the World Series. Boone, a hero in game seven. See that guy in the announcer's booth? That's Mariner's second baseman and Aaron Boone's brother, Brett. What a great moment. Manny was in left field, watching the ball sail over his head and ending his season. Again, he's on the wrong side of someone else's history. One more thing to note about Manny's 2003 season. In 2009, it came out that Manny failed the drug test in 03. This was a time where PED usage wasn't really punished, if that matters to you, but it's just something to be aware of. On to the 03-04 offseason. The Red Sox actually looked into getting rid of Manny Ramirez and his contract. At one point, they put him on irrevocable waivers, which means any team in baseball was free to claim him. No one did, though, thinking his contract was too much. So then, they shifted their attention to trading him to Texas for A-Rod. Like, actually. That looked like it was going to happen for a little while. A trade was agreed to by the two teams, until the players' union rejected the deal because it called for A-Rod taking a pay cut. Remember Aaron Boone from a couple minutes ago? He was all set to be the Yankees' third baseman in 2004, until he got hurt playing pickup basketball. This opened the door for the Yankees to swoop in and make a trade for A-Rod. Aaron Boone is out here causing more pain for the Sox while he's hooping with his friends. Manny stays in Boston though, so that's good. 2004 would be a fun year for Manny. He'd get back at Clemens for throwing at him in the playoffs by taking him deep in the All-Star game. He and Ortiz would become one of the best dynamic duos in baseball history. Manny gave a philosophy lecture when asked who the toughest pitcher to face was. He missed a game to become a naturalized U.S. citizen in May and carried out a tiny American flag with him to left field the next day. He didn't hit a home run that day, but if he did, it would have been the perfect opportunity to pull a Carlos from the benchwarmers. And he'd do one of the weirdest things of the decade by snagging a relay throw from Johnny Damon that was supposed to go into the infield, and him doing that led to an inside-the-park home run. <laughs> Manny again finished third in the MVP voting, leading the AL in both home runs and OPS. The Red Sox would return to the playoffs too. They swept the Angels in the first round, earning themselves a rematch against the Yankees with a World Series appearance on the line, just like the year before. And in the first three games, the Yankees smoked them. This came to a head in a 19-8 beatdown Yankees win in Game 3. Now. It was on the Red Sox to keep their season alive by winning the next four games in a row. Game 4. Yankees are up by one with three outs to go, but the Red Sox beat Mariano Rivera in one of the most famous wins in team history, capped off by a walk-off bomb by Ortiz. Sound cool? Well, what if the exact same thing basically happened the next night? It feels scripted. The Sox were down late, stormed back to keep their season alive, and Ortiz, again, gets the walk-off hit to keep the team alive. No baseball team has ever come back down three games to none, but the Red Sox have a shot. Game 6. Did you know that there's a sock in the Baseball Hall of Fame? This is that sock. It belonged to Kurt Schilling, who pitched a gem at Yankee Stadium that kept the Red Sox alive, still, 
The series is now tied. Three games to none has turned into a Game 7. The Red Sox had all the momentum, and that was made obvious immediately. Six runs in the first two innings, eight in the first four, and ten on the night. Down three games to none, the Red Sox have done the impossible. And they bring that same energy with them to the World Series. There's not too much to say about the 04 World Series, because it didn't last very long. The Red Sox magic was still the vibe for the whole World Series. They would sweep the Cardinals in four games. For the first time since 1918, the Boston Red Sox are champions of baseball. Back to folk. Red Sox fans have longed to hear it. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. Wow. You gotta love it. If you're not a baseball fan, but you've seen the show Lost, this is why Jack refused to believe that the Red Sox could win the World Series while he was on the island. Boston Red Sox won the World Series. <laughs> if, you want, if you wanted me to believe this, you probably should have picked somebody else. It had been 86 years. Everyone thought it would never happen. Boston would get a World Series parade. How did Manny process his first ever championship? With this sign at the parade. Wow. Manny still doesn't like the Yankees. Not one bit. Manny was the MVP of the 2004 World Series. He hit 412 with a 500 on base percentage while making some great plays in the field too. Remember, he almost wasn't even supposed to be here. Even with all that, there was still trade talk floating around Manny. One team was supposedly zeroing in on him. That team was the New York Mets. Marketing campaign concepts of Manny on the Mets exist, and it makes sense because those around the Mets desperately wanted a Manny. This is Victor Diaz. He's a rookie right fielder on the Mets from 2004. He played well in a small sample size, well enough to earn his very own nickname. You might not know who Victor Diaz is, but you know who inspired his nickname, which was Mini Manny. Spoiler, Victor Diaz would not become Manny, and Manny was not on board with the Mets. Then, MVP Baseball 2005 came out. EA Sports, it's in the game. Hey, this is Manny Ramirez from the Boston Red Sox. MVP Baseball 2005 is considered one of the best video games of all time. Notice how the word sports wasn't in that sentence. The game is that well liked. Manny was on the cover, adding to his legacy and forever immortalizing him for gamers. Manny was great again in 2005, reaching 45 home runs and 140 RBIs again. But even in a season where he finished 4th in MVP voting, his most memorable moment had nothing to do with his baseball talent. It's an ordinary regular season game between the Red Sox and the Devil Rays. The Red Sox pitching coach is making a visit to the mound to talk to the Red Sox pitcher and... Where's Manny? Manny decided to take a little break from life and hang out inside of the giant green monster at Fenway Park. It was written off as Manny being Manny. Remember that phrase? It was used when Manny left a paycheck in his shoes on a road trip. By this time, Manny being Manny was a full-blown phenomenon. There were just so many great little funny moments he had with the Red Sox. Everyone wanted to see what Manny would do next, and that usually didn't mean with the bat. Hey, look at Manny. Yeah, dude marches to his own beat. I mean, you never know what he's gonna do next. The Red Sox went to the playoffs in 2005, and lost in the first round to the White Sox. Manny played well, but honestly, who cares? In Boston, they won the World Series for the first time in 86 years the year before. They were all good. Nobody was too heartbroken over the first round exit this time. Even as Manny started to want out of Boston, he still played very well there. In 2006, Manny cemented how unbelievably consistent he was. For all but one of his last 12 years, including 06, he hit 30 homers and drove in 100 runs. He usually hit well over 300 and got on base close to 40% of the time every year too. He also walked the most he ever had in his career and went on a 26 game hitting streak that summer. The Red Sox had a down year though and didn't even really come close to a playoff spot. The American League in 2006 was kind of like the Beatles in the 60s or Nickelodeon in the mid 2000s. So much greatness at one time. Eight teams won 85 games or more in the AL that year. 
the Red Sox had the worst record of those eight. That would not be the case in 2007. The Red Sox had the most wins in baseball. Manny was, of course, a great contributor on that team, even if he did have his weakest season in over a decade that ended with him getting hurt. Lucky for both Manny and the Red Sox, he was able to come back at the very, very end of the year. Game 2 of the ALDS against the Angels. It's the bottom of the ninth. David Ortiz is intentionally walked, so K-Rod can face Manny. How does that go? Left field, and the Red Sox are winners! The next game, Manny and the Red Sox would win big in Anaheim, sweeping the Angels. Their next series would be against Manny's old team, and the Indians would jump out to a 3-1 series lead before Game 5 in Cleveland. During Game 5, the stadium loudspeakers played a song called, It Ends Tonight. <laughs> what do you think happened? Remember, this is a team that came back down 3-0 against the Yankees three years before. If you're the type of person who believes in jinxing, you already saw this coming after what you just heard. The Red Sox didn't even make the next three games close. How do you even describe this level of beating? It felt like the MLB let the Red Sox use metal bats against golf balls for the last three games. Remember the last time the Red Sox came back from a big deficit in the ALCS and went to the World Series? Remember how that ended? Well, it happened again. The Red Sox swept the Colorado Rockies in the World Series. Ring number two for Manny, and for a team that just three years ago hadn't won since before the NFL existed. You want to see the coolest double play ever? Manny Ramirez back, and he makes the catch! What a catch by Ramirez! They're gonna try and double up at first, and they do! This man really made a running catch high-fived a fan, and still had enough time and arm strength to turn the double play. Wow. That wouldn't be the only memorable thing Manny would do in Baltimore that year. On May 31st, Manny joined the 500 home run club, only the 24th hitter ever to do that. Manny would get off to a good start in 2008, but off the field, got into some trouble. Specifically, two fights. One with a teammate, one with a 64-year-old Red Sox traveling secretary. This was because he couldn't promise Manny 16 tickets for a game. We don't know what kind of demons, if any, Manny was facing during these incidents, but it was clear that his time in Boston was coming to an end, especially with this being the last year of his contract. After years of trade rumors, Manny would finally be shipped out of Boston. Not to the Rangers, not to the Mets, to the LA Dodgers. Manny was 36 years old at the time of the trade. There was reason to think trading him was the right move, and he wouldn't be great much longer. But at the end of 2008, Manny gave baseball one last miracle. Comes to the plate. Fastball is lifted to left center and deep. Back goes Young. 